One of the things I did not hear from the last panel, what I heard was free money is good money. What I didn't hear was the government has a lot of it to offer to medical innovators. And that comes through the NIH, as well as a few other agencies, Small Business and Innovative Research Program, the SBIR program. So I work at the National Institutes of Health in the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. So we cover cardiovascular, pulmonary, hematologic, and sleep disordered research space. Those are what's in my institute's mission. If you're not in that space, we've got another institute that funds your research too. The office that I'm in at the NHLBI is called the Office of Translational Alliances and Coordination. It's kind of an awkward name. We're in the government. We try and make everything as awkward as possible. So <laughs> it's just a true thing. We also, however, in my office have tried really hard to empower you, our biomedical innovators, and the investors, and the licensors, and the strategic partners to be able to deliver the best health possible with the newest, boldest innovations. I'm going to walk you through that in the next couple of minutes. This is our office. We have one missing person. We still miss her desperately. She left us for the Small Business Administration back in January. We have Kurt Merrick. He's our deputy director. He is an expert in all things small business program related at NIH. My colleague, Dr. Gary Robinson, is a business development expert. My day job when I'm not talking about funding opportunities as I'm a regulatory consultant and specialist for our funded innovators. We have an investor in residence. We actually have two entrepreneurs in residence, but it kind of made the slide unbalanced, so I only put one of them up there. We have very deep scientific expertise at the National Institutes of Health. People who know the landscape, know your market area, know the clinical needs that you're trying to meet with your innovations. You don't normally see the types of titles that are in my office at offices in NIH. So what the heck is it that a business development strategist, a regulatory strategist, an entrepreneur in residence, what are they doing at NIH? Well, they're helping you. How are we doing that? We do things like support IND-enabling programs. These are programs that provide resources in-kind services, regulatory support, manufacturing support, farm tax support to your projects. We have the Gene Therapy Resource Program, the PACT program, which is Production Assistance for Cellular Therapies, and the SMART program, which covers biologics and small molecules. These are all sort of periodic calls for applications. They then go out for peer review. We fund as many as we can with the budgets that we have. We also have a clinical specimen and data repository. So if you are working in, for instance, a rare space, and it is something where NHLBI or one of our sister institutes has funded a clinical study, we may have clinical data. We may have biospecimens that you can use to validate your diagnostic, right? Do some of that pre-IDE work. Great resources. Everything I'm going to tell you about, you've already paid for by paying your taxes. We are free money. We do not take equity. We do not expect any IP in return for the types of things that we offer to you. This is all a very transparent thing, very, uh, very appreciative of all of you paying your taxes here in the US. We also understand that there's a lot you don't know as a new biomedical innovator. Now, the group here is very diverse, and you actually have much more experience than a lot of the innovators that we may fund. But as you well know, the medical device industry is predominantly almost 70% companies of under 10 employees. It's very hard with under 10 employees to have expertise in all of the fields that you need as a biomedical innovator to develop something and get it through the FDA. So what we've done is we've developed the NHLBI Small Biz Hangouts, and this is where the expertise in our office really shines through. We have a series on intellectual property, how to develop it, how to protect it. We have a series on regulatory issues, overviews of medical device, biologics, development processes, finding regulatory consultants, developing target product plans or data development plans, all of this sort of stuff. We have a series on market analysis, how to 
understand who your competitors are, how to write effective grants, because as I said at the very beginning, this is predicated in our office on supporting our innovators, most of whom are supported by the SBIR grant mechanisms. So uh, this, they are all compiled in a single playlist on the NHLBI YouTube channel, very easy to find. You can just search Small Biz Hangouts and it will pop up right away. We also dive into those academic centers where we have a significant bolus of funding. So not, you know, the NIH funding that goes out to those academic labs isn't spread completely equally across all institutes in the U.S. There are certain institutes, there are uh, universities that focus on heart disease or pulmonary disease. So the funding across NIH is spread across depending upon the interests of areas of uh, concern. And we know that there are innovations there living in academic labs, being stimulated, produced by graduate students, by postdocs, by young professors who aren't yet tenured. And we want to bring those forward. So we've developed two programs. One that is NHLBI specific, that's the National NIH Centers for Accelerated Innovations, and one that is across the entire NIH mission, which is the Research Evaluation and Commercialization Hubs. So that's the NCAI or the REACH programs. If you're looking for a technology that you want to bring into your company, I suggest you take a look at some of these technologies. These academic innovators are put through almost a boot camp, except instead of it being a boot camp that lasts a few weeks, it's a six, to two, six months to two year program of intensive project management that is intended to simulate industry standards so that when you are looking to pick up a technology, it doesn't fail the way most academic innovations do when you bring them in-house and take a look at them where you can't reproduce the results because the controls weren't in place or the wrong experiments were done because there was no regulatory plan in place. And of course, we have the small business program. This is free money, right? No one, no one really has free money, right? There's always something you have to do for money. Well, in our case, you need to write a research plan. And you may, if you apply for larger funding, need to also provide us with a commercialization plan. The funding for phase one, feasibility, proof of concept, is about 150 to $225,000. It's meant to support you for about six months. Do those killer experiments. See if you really are going to be able to go forward. Where do you get that first funding for your rare project? Your innovation that's going to meet less than 1% of the population, possibly less than a tenth of a percent. The government loves to fund that kind of stuff. We know it's hard to get the money, but you need to have some value inflection point in order to go to an investor. You can get it through the SBIR program. The phase two program is a continuation award. It's about one to one and a half million dollars intended to support you for about two years worth of continued research. Maybe this can get you to a pre-submission meeting or pre-IND meeting, or a phase one clinical trial, or in the case of devices, a feasibility trial, okay? At NHLBI, we go a little bit beyond that. We also participate in what is called the phase 2B program, and that's up to $3 million of non-dilutive funding. So coming through us, you can get almost $5 million of non-dilutive funding to support your product development work. For the phase 2B program, though, we have a couple of additional requirements. It must be an FDA-regulated technology. This isn't for your nearest medical app that you're trying to develop. You're not going to get $5 million for that. But a new heart pump? Sure. A new treatment for COPD? Absolutely. A new diagnostic, a new imaging agent? Absolutely. We're there for you. It will require not just FDA approval, but it will require a funding match of some sort. If it is truly a rare disease, you ask us for three million, we ask you to show up with a commitment for a million dollars. If it's arth arthrosclerosis, well then that's kind of a big indication you're gonna be able to get investors a little more easily, we ask for a one-to-one -one match. We hope that the three million dollars we're putting out there is an excellent carrot to bring your investors to the table. I know I only have 10 minutes. I think perhaps Joe is starting to look at me as if that time is running short. <laughs> I'm sorry? Ah, okay. 
Um, all of the information on our funding opportunities is posted online on the NIH guide, or you can reach out to me and I'll be able to connect you with the appropriate websites. I also have some handouts if people are interested later. Um, but we fund at the NHLBI nearly $100 million each and every year in small business research. Across the NIH, that number is 800 million. So there's a lot of money to be had. It does take a little bit of time to get, but if you think about the return of talking to angels, what I have heard from the, from the community, the biomedical community, is that your chance of getting an angel to invest is about 0.5%, a half a percent. You have to talk to one to 200 angels to maybe get an investment. For us, the application process, you're at a 10 to 12% funding level. So it's actually a lot easier. And you don't have to stand up and give a presentation, you just send in some paperwork. We'll talk you through the whole process. All you need to do is talk to and connect with a program officer that covers the focus area of your technology. I mentioned also we try and connect people with investors, and we try and connect the investors with our people, our companies, our academic investigators. We do that in two ways. First is we actually at NHLBI hold our own innovation conferences. We do this at least once a year. We've done two a year at times, depends on budgets and all of that goodness. And so we train our innovators on how to deliver an effective pitch, and then we put them up in front of a room of investors who cover NHLBI space. We can't bring every investor in our space into a room, so we also partner with Resi, with AdvaMed, with Bio, with the Angel Capital Association. Who else did I miss up there? Life Sciences Summit, and a number of other organizations that bring the investors into a scenario, have the partnering, excuse me, software that was mentioned earlier, and where our companies can make those connections. Again, every single company we send to one of these we have worked with, we have mentored, to ensure that they are able to communicate clearly the value proposition and what their next value inflection points are. With that, this should be my last slide, Whew, okay. If you wanna reach out to me when I'm back in the office, here's my contact information, and I thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Chris.